Praise God. I guess, Kim. Come on, Kim. Praise the Lord. We're going to invite the preacher up here tonight. Y'all pray for her. You know, like, like she could say, you know, she can't do nothing that with the Holy Ghost. And I, I just thank God for her. Y'all just pray for her. Y'all just give her another hand. I just want to praise the Lord for, first of all, just being waking up this morning in my right mind and being able to walk around. And a lot of people can't do that. And I can think of some people that don't even have the ability to do that. And I thank God for what he's done in my life. And as Brother Bruce was speaking, I was thinking about yesterday morning before I went to work, um, I had this thought it come to my mind that I might be in a car wreck. And then so, you know, of course, I prayed about that. And I was like, Lord, please help me. And so uh, when I left to go to work, I, I went to work. And then later on, I went to lunch. And I was driving my car through a parking lot out there and um, almost got hit by a car because I didn't see the car. It was my fault. And I was on the phone with Kenneth. And when it happened, my car went dead. So it cut the phone off and he didn't know what happened. And it like gave him a heart attack. But you know, after that, he told me that after I left for work, that he felt really impressed that I might be in a wreck. And you know, when he got down and prayed and he said he really cried and prayed. And first of all, I just want to thank the Lord for protection, for protecting me. He's protected me my whole life. You know, Brother Bruce, um, there's a lot of things, dangers that have come my way. You know, even from a small child, but God has always been there to protect me. And I want to learn how to depend on Him and trust Him more day by day. But um, I want to get into the Word of God here. And I praise God for the Spirit of God that we've already felt. And uh, the song they were singing, I Fly Away. That's just such a wonderful thought to know that one day we're going to get out of here and all of our battles, troubles, and trials will be behind us. And, you know, the devil tries to make it look bad, Brother Lynn, and, oh, like these troubles and trials are going to be here forever. They're never going away. But, you know, one uh, minister friend of mine, she was preaching, and she said, this could be my last trial. This could be my last battle. But I just want to ask us tonight and ask myself, if this battle that we're in right now, tonight, if this was our last fight for the Lord and our last battle, how would we handle it? Um, how we would probably fight a little bit harder to win it because we knew that it would be the last one. And I, I know that y'all probably want to do like me. When you leave this world, you want to leave with a shout. Like Brother Bruce said, you don't want to leave and not be ready. But I don't know about you, but I want to be fighting the battle. I want to do my best. And I told the Lord today, sometimes I come up short of his glory, but I thank God for his mercy and grace that he makes up the difference and he helps us in the fight that we're in. But the title of this message I, that the Lord gave me is Don't Let the Battle Steal Your Praise. And I'm going to read some scriptures about uh, some people they, they were in a battle. They were going through something really bad, and it caused them to lose their praise. It's Psalms 137, uh, verse 1, chapter 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. You know, they hang their harps on the willow, Brother Barnett, and, and they ask the question, How can we sing our song in a strange land? And I was looking in this uh, uh, one verse that said, They wept when they remembered Zion. And I know sometimes the older saints of God and sometimes we remember the former years and we weep because we miss the way that it used to be. But you know, God is still the same today and we can still have a move of God today. The only thing holding us back is us. You know, if we'll just get our mind on the Lord and, and get our desire right. But they were asking the question, how can we sing our song and I was thinking about this evil world that we live in. 
we may wonder, how can I continue to sing a song? How can I be happy? How can I sing the Lord's song in a weary land that we're in? And I was thinking about the school shootings that are going on. And it's just getting more out of control every day. And I was thinking about abortion being legalized and how, you know, uh, grotesque that is that America would allow uh, the doctors to kill the babies before that they're ever born. And they don't even have any say so about it. But, you know, you might not believe that abortion's murder, but I'm here to tell you that it is. Because I wouldn't be standing here if I had been aborted. But thank God I was born. And I remember a girl on TV, she, she had one arm missing. Because when she was a baby, her mother attempted to have an abortion. And during the abortion, she changed her mind. Her mother changed her mind and decided to have the baby. But she was born, but she only had one arm. What does that prove? That proves that that is a birth inside, that there's life there. And, the, and abortion is murder. And how can we rejoice? How can we celebrate down here and sing the songs when the LGBT uh, organization is on the rise and, and they're, they're gaining uh, their rights, they call it, and they're gaining more power in, in the uh, government and things like that and more evil things are being uh, legalized every day. Uh, and how can we rejoice uh, when ISIS, and we've seen it where they were killing people and uh, beheading people, cutting their heads off, and I'm sure some of them were Christians, and one man, they actually put him in a cage, and, and they burned him alive, and we, you turn on the, the 5 o'clock news, and you see all these things, uh, and we as Christians, uh, we let it get us down, uh, and we wonder how uh, we can hold on to God. Uh, how can we make it uh, in this evil world? Uh, because it's growing more evil day by day. And the Bible said, you know, as, the, as sin abounds, that the love of many shall wax cold. And I know I hear people talking and, and saying, oh, we're going to have a great revival. We're going to have a great revival in the end times. But that's not what my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me there's going to be a great falling away. And many that one time love God are going to turn from him. But where does that put you and me? It puts us to wake up, to be alert, to be aware that the time is evil and time is running out. Time is running out for you and I. We're not going to have much more time to work for Jesus. And what we do right now is going to count the most. And, you know, this title of this message says, Don't Let the Battle Steal Your Praise. I don't know one true child of God that's not in a warfare, that's not in a battle. And sometimes it's the hardest battle that you've ever faced before and you've never fought the kind of demons that we're fighting this day and time that we're living in. You can go into these churches. They have a false spirit. They have a spirit, but it's not of God. They have a false spirit, and it's not of God. It's of the world, and they'll pat you on the back and give you a cookie and a cup of coffee and tell you everything is going to be lovely. But I'm here to tell us tonight by the Lord that it's not going to get any easier it's not going to get any better in this life. Our hope is only in Christ Jesus. But for the child of God, we should lift up our head because we're soon going home. And soon the devil will be bound up for good. And he won't be able to bother us anymore. But I was thinking about Samuel 17 and 29 says, 1 Samuel 
David, just a little child, just little David, just one person. He said, is there not a cause? <clears throat> is there not a cause when he got ready to go out to kill Goliath? And I was thinking that we have some Goliaths to kill and we have some battles to fight. We have some temptations to face. But we've got a God and he's not going to fail us when we go out to battle and we go out and face our Goliath. He's going to be facing it with us. I said, God is going to be fighting the battle with us. He's going to be facing it with us. And like Brother Bruce said, without God, we can do nothing. I can't fix my problems, but I know a God who can. And, you know, I can't even tell you how he can do it. All I know is he can do it. And he was and is and is to come. He spoke the world into existence. So there's not a problem we could bring that he could not fix. We, we, we won't be able to figure it out. Like putting a puzzle together, there might be one piece that's missing. And we're trying to make it fit. You ever tried to make a piece fit in a puzzle and it didn't really fit? And just like, this is going in there. I've done that before. And then I'm like, well, that don't really fit. That's terrible. And take it out. But Jesus knows the piece of the puzzle. He, he has the answer, the solution. He is the answer. Oh, Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, the enemy shall come in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him when the enemy comes in. We have a God. We have a shield. We have a spirit of God. Fend us from what we're facing. And you think about the story of Esther. And y'all that know the story, I don't have time to read it. But Haman was an evil man and he wanted to kill Mordecai. And he had built these gallows or had them built. And he was, I'm sure he looked at them and said, I can't wait for the day that I put Mordecai on these gallows. But you guess what happened? God turned it around. God, I said, God, nobody could have done it. But God turned it around. And guess who died on those gallows? It was uh, Haman, and it wasn't Mordecai. But God's going to turn your situation around. And the devil says you're going to die. And God says you're going to live and not die. He's, the devil says you're defeated. And God says you're victorious. Just keep on fighting the battle and you shall win. As long as Jesus is on board... <clears throat> Ezekiel 22 and 30 says, And I sought for a man among them that they should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. But let me ask you and let me ask myself, will we stand in the gap? Will I stand in the gap? I have nieces and nephews that need the Lord. I have not only that, I have friends that need the Lord. I, I, and I have people that, we're, that are in the world. We have, they're lost and undone without God. And we don't even know them. But guess what? They need somebody to tell them about Jesus. But will we do it? Will I do it? Would I be willing and, you know, you might say, well, I'm not a singer, I'm not a preacher, and I'm not a this, and I'm not a that. But, you know, one thing we can all be, and that is a prayer warrior. Oh, about them old prayer warriors. You know, I've heard about them, them old timers. Oh, they'd go to the woods, and they would pray and pray and pray and pray. And they knew when they touched heaven. And we can touch heaven just like they did. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm 46 years old and I'm nothing. And I'm totally nothing without God. But there's something inside me 
that I can't explain that I want to be. I want to be like the old timers. I want to be like they were. But there was one thing about it. They loved God. And they were willing to stand in the gap for somebody that needed God. That's why people are saved today. That's probably the very reason we're in church now because someone stood in the gap. Someone prayed. Somebody fasted. You know, that's why we're here. You know, we wouldn't have, may not be here without those prayers that went up just for you and I. <clears throat> but 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 7, I want to talk about a man that was definitely a man of God and he was willing to stand in the gap. And he did, and that was Paul. It says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He knew he was fixing to go. He said, I have fought a good fight. <laughs> I have finished my course. Paul said, I have kept the faith. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what kind of end am I going to have? <laughs> Sister Bobby, am I going to keep the faith? Am I going to fight the fight? Am I going to walk the walk? Am I going to stand in the gap? Are we going to hold on? We've got to. I was talking to my sister today, and she said, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> if we leave the Lord, there's nowhere to go to. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? There's nothing out there. The bridge is out. Without Jesus, the bridge is out. And Brother Bruce was talking about hell. And without Jesus, that's where we'll end up. But if we'll hold on to Jesus, I mean hold on to Jesus just as tight as we can, even though the battle rages, just hold on and don't let go. He will pull us through. He will turn it around. He will help us in our, in our greatest battles. The word fight means to take part in violent struggle involving the exchange of physical blows or the use of weapons. And we know our weapons are not uh, carnal. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, uh, well, I'm just, from what I'm reading from the Word of God, uh, we don't just uh, pack a picnic lunch and, and skip our way into heaven, but we are going to have to fight some battles. We are going to have to get the weapons of our warfare to work in, in our life. And we're going to have to hold on to God just a little bit longer so we can make it to heaven. But, you know, <clears throat> Ephesians 6, 10, and 12, and I don't have time to read all the scriptures I thought I was going to read, so I took some of them out. I don't want to bore y'all. with Not that the Word of God is boring, but just with a lengthy sermon. I don't want it to be too long, but <clears throat> Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the, in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we know about the armor of God. And, one, and in those scriptures on down, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And God help me to have my shield up because that's part of my protection. And we need to put on the whole armor of God. I need to put on the whole armor of God. And I was thinking about this game that um, my husband has. And in the game, he was uh, fighting and doing these things. But he was trying to win this thing in the game. But he couldn't. And he, he dealt with that forever. And he just moved around the blocks and tried to figure out the puzzle. Just on and on and on. And I would sit over there thinking, oh, my Lord, this is so boring. I can't take it anymore. And I told him, I said, we got to find a young person that knows about these games that can tell us what you're supposed to do right here. So I ended up talking to a young girl on my job. 
And so she sent it to my cell phone, and I, when we watched it, guess what was missing that he didn't have, that he couldn't win? He didn't have a shield. And that was why he couldn't win and conquer this thing. So in the game, he went back and found the shield and got the shield and conquered the thing. And you know, that's what God is going to do in our lives. But we have to take on the whole armor of God. <clears throat> but in 2 Chronicles 20 and 15, and he said, Hearken, hearken ye all Judah and ye, and ye inhabitants, of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Uh, what about the great multitude? What about the great uh, uh, principalities of the air? What about these things uh, that are coming out against our souls? Uh, and I know that they are. But, but he, the Lord said, don't be afraid of the great multitude. He was saying, don't be afraid of the enemies that's all around you. You might be surrounded tonight. The devil might have you surrounded and thinking that you're going to be his prey. But God said, the battle is God's. The battle is God's. Whoa! I said the battle is God's. It don't belong to me. It don't belong to you. But it belongs to God. And he is able tonight. But a few more scriptures. If the Lord will be my helper. Is Exodus 17, 11 through 16. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Am Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the, and, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady, until the going down of the sun, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out, of, out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jeho Jehovah Nisi, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from this generation to, gen to, from this generation to generation. But we know that Moses was a mighty man of God. And he was a strong man of God. But if Brother Rickett would come up here and just stand, maybe up here, and I want him to be Moses. And Brother Kenneth, if you'll come up here and be Aaron for me and Brother Bruce, I would like for you to come up here and just be the, uh, I think his name is Her, and we're going to do an illustration of, of Brother Moses. Now, he's the leader, and they're in a great battle, and they're trying to win this battle. But, okay, hold up your hands. Well, this is Moses. He's holding up his hands, and they've been fighting for quite a while. Step over this way here, brother. So they've been fighting for quite a while. So he's getting tired, and his hands are getting heavy, and they're going down when his hands begin to go down. They begin to lose the battle. But God came on the scene and brought them some help. And God held up Moses' hand through Aaron and her. And guess what? The battle was won, and God called it. He, they called it Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, which means God is our banner. Jehovah Nisi, which means devil. You're a liar. It means we won the battle. We won the war. And you are defeated. And they defeated Amalek. Thank you, brothers. But our banner today is... We is the blood stained banner of Jesus Christ. Yes, we have a banner, and it's 
nothing more, nothing less, nothing greater but the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I want the devil to know it. I want him to know that he can find me all that he wants to. But I got the blood applied to my soul. And he cannot win in the name of Jesus. If there's any more time left, I'm going to try to sing a song. got to stand our ground against the devil, never turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated through Christ the battle is won. we got to keep our eyes on Jesus and hold his nav guard hand. And when the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. It's just about time for the angels to bind old Satan up and cast him into the lake of fire so for down that will never come. Oh, what a time we're going to have Never more to fight another battle For the enemy will not be around we got to stand our ground against the devil Never turn our backs and run The enemy is defeated Through Christ the battle is won we got to keep our eyes on Jesus And hold his nails guard hands And when the battle is over We'll be living in the promised land His piece of ground. Oh, all the people began to run. They were afraid of those around. But Shama put up a mighty good fight. He said, Boys, I'll never back down. And if we're to win our battles, we too must stand our ground. We gotta stand our ground against the devil. Never turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated. Through Christ, the battle is won. We gotta keep our eyes on Jesus. Just ask our hands, and when the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. Oh, and when the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Somebody hadn't obeyed the Lord, but just don't leave here without obeying him. Just do whatever the Lord tells you to do, and if everybody has obeyed the Lord, then that's well and fine. Obey the Lord. Right. Two minutes. We got two minutes, so. Uh, <clears throat> I tell you, that was a wonderful message. The battle's not yours, but it's the Lord's. Amen. And I tell you, God will fight your battles. You've lived for him, trust in him. He'll see you through. Amen. If there's anybody here, if you want prayer tonight, we'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Just my God is so good to us. Uh, praise Lord. I'm glad uh, he saved my soul. I'm glad. Uh, sometimes I don't know which way to turn, but a lot of times you ever been there, you say, God, I know you got everything under control. Uh, hallelujah. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, but you might be my going through something right now. Uh, but look to Jesus. Depend on him. He'll see you through. Uh, you say, oh, God, take me out of this trial, this valley. Uh, 
But, you know, I don't pray that no more, Brother Morgan. I, I say, God, give me strength to go through. I, I don't want to go under it. I don't want to go over it. I don't want to go around it. I, but I want to go through in the name of Jesus by his help. It's through the valleys and through the trials. It makes you stronger in God. Your faith grows stronger, Brother Barnett. My God, my, it takes uh, uh, two mountains to make one valley. Uh, but in that valley, there's some rich soil. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm growing every day in the Lord. Uh, I try to die daily every day in God. Uh, Jesus is soon coming. Uh, I want to be ready. Uh, I don't want to be like the thief. Uh, oh, hallelujah. My, and my not watch for him coming uh, or I will a wicked servant. Uh, but I want to be watching every day. Uh, I want to live a life pleasing the Lord uh, here uh, like I do at home home and out there on, in the world. Uh, God watches us every day. Uh, I'm glad uh, that I got somebody to fight my battles. Anybody want prayer tonight? Uh, hallelujah. God's able. Uh, if not, praise the Lord. We miss brother uh, and sister Staten. I tell you, keep praying for sister Staten. He usually uh, 